and do almost anything. And as far as the, uh, you know, how dangerous that job it was, that's life. I mean, that, you know, it's amazing. Uh, and, and I actually interviewed a couple of 90-year-old loggers who had uh, logged in the Smokies during the Depression. And, and it was like they would just bring in men because, you know, you, men would get killed almost every day. And it's just like you had this line of men who had hungry families. And they'd keep coming in. And, uh, you know, one of the fun things about doing the book was the research because I got to talk to this, uh, as I say, this logger who was actually 92. And I said, you know, the question I thought would be interesting was, what were you most afraid of? Because, you know, that job, there's so many dangers. And uh, he said it was the widow makers. And, you know, if you've uh, ever done any timber, you know that uh, when, lot, when uh, you cut a tree and fell it, uh, branches will shear off and, and hang in other trees. He said that was the thing he was most afraid of because he said, you know, he could be as careful as possible where he put his hand just in case of a rattlesnake. Uh, he had some control over how he used an axe or saw. But he said those, they were just, it was just your, you, just your time because those things could hang for a month up there and then come down. And as I did more and more research, I was amazed at how many men got killed just where uh, they would get hit on the top of the head by a branch that dropped maybe 80 feet and they'd kill them and break their skull. Uh, just incredibly dangerous job. And I, you know, I had relatives who did that up in those mountains. And, uh, uh, you know, I, that's, whenever I start writing about how tough writing is, I think, well, you know, I'm not doing that. You know. <laughs> yes. You know, I don't outline, when I do essays, I, I do outline, I have a plan, but when I write novels, I just kind of, uh, just go with an idea, you know, not, not even an idea, I just kind of let, get, get the characters, I just kind of let them go and, and, and kind of let them lead me where, uh, where they're going, and, and a lot of times I don't know where it's going. I think that's probably a good thing, because if I don't, maybe the readers will be surprised too, yeah. But it's a, it's a weird experience, and the more I write, the less I understand how it works. It's just like these stories just kind of come out of nowhere, and I just kind of write them down. Yeah. Well, the best way to do research, now, if, you, if you've got the paperback of this book, you probably already know this, but what I like to do is I like to find the people that are fanatics about one thing, you know. Because if you can find them, they're going to tell you things you can never imagine. And I was very lucky in that, you know, when I, uh, I spent a lot of time outdoors, and I'd seen a hawk catch a snake before, you know, just snatch it up. And I'm sure if you've any spent time outdoors, you've seen that. But when I was thinking about, I wanted something that Saran could do that would intimidate these men, that these men would feel like I couldn't do this. And I came up at first with just having a train go out on horseback and shoot rattlesnakes. And yeah, that's pretty impressive, but it's not mythic. It's not going to be something that really makes her stand out. And then I thought, well, I should train a dog to sniff out rattlesnakes. That, that didn't seem right. And then I, I remembered that hawk, and I thought, well, what if I had to train not a hawk, but an eagle? And that's kind of a crazy idea if you think about it. And, and I, I thought, well, can I make that believable to anybody? And, uh, so I, I actually, what I did was I, I started uh, doing research and I, I, I contacted the American Falconry Association. And they finally got tired of me bothering them. So they said, you know, go talk to Scott Snutson out in Wyoming. You know, not literally, but they probably wish I had. But I called him. <laughs> anyway, at that time, Scott was, I think there were 12, maybe 13 people in the United States who hunted with an eagle, legally. And Scott was one of them. Uh, he hunted jackrabbits. Is, but uh, I told him what I was doing, and he got interested in it, and, and we started doing, you know, talking over the phone. I mean, one night I heard an eagle chirping, you know, <laughs> he kept it in his house. I mean, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but, uh, but I kind of like crazy people. They're interesting. They're always interesting. But, uh, you know, it, you know, I kept talking to him, and, and he said, well, you know, if you really want to make this bird impressive, it ought to be a bear beach which is a, a golden eagle, uh, but it's been bred since the time of Kublai Khan, probably even before then. And, uh, and, and, and uh, they still hunt with them in Kazakhstan and, and some other places, Mongolia. But uh, the amazing thing about those birds is that, and if you don't believe me, you can look this up on YouTube, 
Let's tell her wolf in the sky. Now that's a badass bird. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that just struck me as being perfect for Serena. You know, you got a bird that can hunt wolves. And, uh, and, and, he, and he also, he essentially taught me how to do it, how to train a bird. I mean, when Serena goes into that uh, uh, barn, into the stall, that's the way traditionally in Mongolia they, they train the birds. You go in there and you break the bird. You don't sleep, you don't eat. And, and, and finally when the bird will get, will in a sense give in to you. And so all that was just interesting to me. And, uh, and it also gave me a lot of fun you know, figuring out how do you get a, a, a bird from Mongolia to uh, North Carolina mountains in 1929. <laughs> that was kind of fun too. But yeah, I love doing research. Yeah. Oh, which author? Wow, there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love Shakespeare. I think that comes through in this book. But also uh, William Faulkner, Flannery O'Connor, uh, Theodore uh, Dostoevsky, uh, wrote Crime and Punishment. That's probably maybe my all-time favorite book. Uh, yeah, you know, I read a lot. Uh, and I read a lot when I was young. And, and those writers all influenced me. I think you can see a little bit of Huckleberry Finn maybe in the way the uh, Loggers talk, you know, the kind of wit that they show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Dostoevsky remains a writer I really admire. Yeah, he's, he's certainly one. Yeah. Have you ever traveled to any of these places that these other authors like um, the Plains home or Faulkner's home? Yeah, I've been to Faulkner's home. And then what about all people trying to follow like the places that you've set up as like a tourist attraction? <laughs> well, not yet, uh, <laughs> but, but you can go. To I mean, if you if you really read the book carefully, there's some places you can go into, into the uh, uh, Smokies now, and you can actually there's a there is a timber camp and a uh, table that I use that's in the uh, the novel that there's one like that uh, in Western North Carolina. I actually saw it, it was a of a uh, uh, yellow poplar and the the uh, table. And this was owned by timber. It was in a timber owner's. Uh, kind of dining room. It was uh, from here to the wall, to, you know, the, the table. And it was from a single plank, and it was about this wide. And, and I just saw that it was almost like it was a trophy, you know. You know they cut down this tree uh, that was 120 feet high. And, uh, and you know, those kinds of things are always kind of fascinating. So, yes? Why you should suffer? Yeah. Uh, well, I just thought in a way I almost had to because the prediction made by uh, Galloway's mother says that one thing can't kill him. So, you know, essentially he had to keep getting hurt, you know, falling down a cliff, getting bit by rattlesnakes. And, uh, and also I just thought it was, there was a kind of irony in that, you know, he's come to those mountains to hunt for the panther. And he finally finds one, <laughs> but he can't do much about it because he's getting ready to eat him. And, uh, <laughs> You know, I've always had a soft spot for mountain lions. Uh, you know, I still believe they're up there. You know, some of y'all, you know, most scientists are skeptical, but I, I've got a couple of people who've seen them that I trust. One more, and we'll put time together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you, did you have confidence in your writing? Did you initially think that this was going to be made into a, a motion picture when you started writing? No, I, I, you know, what I tried, I didn't, ha I had no idea. I didn't even know if it'd get published. You know, what I try to do is I, I want to write as good a book as I can. And if I can satisfy myself and feel like I've done the best that I can, then uh, I'm, I'm happy. I've just been pretty lucky. Thank y'all. <laughs>